Welcome back to our discussion of the 14 defining characteristics of fascism. Yesterday we went over rampant cronyism and corruption, and today our final episode is number 14, fraudulent elections. Sometimes elections in fascist nations are a complete sham. Other times elections are manipulated by smear campaigns against or even assassination of opposition candidates, use of legislation to control voting numbers or political district boundaries, and manipulation of the media. Fascist nations also typically use their judiciaries to manipulate or control elections. So does America fall into this one? I think it does, not not in the, in the most extreme ways. I know we've messed with elections overseas all over the place. But here it's more like just look at this last election, what the Democrats did. They had a, a, a candidate, whether I like him or not, which I, I you know, my feelings about it. They pushed the more popular candidate out of out of their, you know, he didn't have a chance to, to run in their party. And the Republicans, they, they were doing the same thing. It's just full. It, it's just total like money running these elections. And they're always going to go the way that the people with the money want one way or another. I would look at the use of legislation to control voting numbers. I mean, we saw a massive amount of voter suppression last year um and it's nothing new that we haven't seen it's the new jim crow laws that have been being put in place north carolina had over a hundred thousand african americans couldn't vote for no reason other than being black um actually that's a pretty low estimate i've seen some very high estimates it's just hard to get the exact number because uh actually the supreme court had called them out and told them they couldn't do it and then but then the supreme court said they could wait till january So, and that was like a month before the election. We saw in Indiana something similar, 125,000 individuals weren't allowed to vote because of their skin color. So, if you look into those cases, um, from decent sources at least, you can, you can start to see where we're starting to see this voter suppression even more. And it's, and my, I've been watching this very closely since the beginning of this administration, and I'm telling you now, as long as we are allowing this um, voter commission that is trying to find these fraudulent votes, the unsubstantiated claims of widespread voter fraud, uh, as long as we, as a nation, just sit back and take this, a whole lot more people aren't going to be able to vote next year in 2018. They're trying to suppress all votes. Just yesterday... A report came out that Trump's election commission co-chair pushes rules that lead to tossed out votes and they want more voter suppression in all the states, not just the uh, states that it already has it in. So Chris Kobach, who is the secretary of state for Kansas, uh, is also the co-chairman of this advisory commission. And Kansas has some of the worst suppression laws and he wants to take them national. Oh, let me tell you about Kansas living in Kansas. Kansas is so goddamn corrupt that, like, they don't even hide it here. It's just like, look what we're doing. What are you going to do about it? And people in Kansas are really good people. I like living here, you know, because of that. But they, they, they just take it. And I can assure you, pretty much anybody who comes out of Kansas's government is not somebody you should trust with anything, certainly not with anything having to do with elections. You know, we have a Republican governor who I've gone out and talked to Republicans and I can't find a single one that likes this guy, but yet he somehow won the election. They all voted against him. Like they said, they like, I guess he looked even surprised that he won, you know, there was somebody yeah. behind that, you know? Right. Yep. Um, and these voting machine companies have paid a lot of fines for fraud, by the way. Yeah, I was going to say the electronic voting machines are the best thing for these parties now. Because if, if you want a valid election, what you do is you go to paper. You know what I mean? You don't have anything electronic, nothing that's going to go, got to go online. You have one person, one vote, piece of paper, no electoral college. And make sure that when they're counted, you have backup for backup to make sure there's no corruption in that. Right. It's really not that hard to do. It's just they, it, it doesn't benefit the people in charge to do that because the person that gets voted in might not be the person they want voted in. It might not be a Democrat or Republican. 
might be somebody that doesn't go along with the corporation's agenda, and that would be horrific for them. I mean, we can't leave out the I, we can leave out the electoral college in general, but in this discussion, we can't. Um, we have to realize that the electoral college is way out of date. It has been for way too long. Actually, it has been since the day it was made. Um, and we can't ignore the fact that Trump did not win the popular vote, just as we saw. As a matter of fact, we haven't seen a Republican candidate since Bush won win the popular vote without being incumbent. That should tell you something. That's why these voter suppression laws are going in to make sure those that vote for a different candidate are not able to vote so that they can keep Republicans in office. Republicans are vastly unpopular. It is not half of the population like people like to throw out there. Yeah, plus, I don't know. This is just something weird I I saw after Reagan, after Big Bush. You had Clinton, then you had Little Bush, then you had Obama. Now you have Trump. It just seems like every eight years it goes back and forth from party to party. Well, that actually makes sense. Because you have eight years of being able to pick apart everything that's bad. So then you have people who didn't vote the previous years ready to vote. And then they become complacent during that eight years. And so then the other side comes out and votes in more in, in more numerous numbers. That's really all that comes down to. That makes perfect sense. I didn't think about that. I right. haven't slept so if you're in a couple, uh, I haven't slept in a oh, few nights. No, but that's a good thing to bring up. A lot of people don't realize that if we just look at plain social behavior, if you're in a situation like let's say we know that the largest voter turnout ever was with uh, Obama for the first term. By the second term, it's not that there was less in, you know, enthusiasm or anything like that. First of all, we already had 4 years to know he wasn't going to do everything he said he was going to do. Second of all, well, who's he running against? Mitt Romney? Okay, well, maybe I don't need to worry about this. Mitt Romney's not going to get anything, and so on. And we did see that again this year. We did see that again with Democrats who went, there's no way Trump can win. I don't need to worry about it. And I'm not saying that anything. I'm not getting on any sides. We're not talking about Hillary Clinton. I'm just saying specifically looking at human behavior, you get that kind of complacency in your head, and you go, okay, I don't have to do it. But what a lot of people don't realize is they need to pay attention to midterm elections. That's what they need to focus on. And not just because that's what's next, but that's because that's where so many chances are lost. The 2020 election is incredibly important. Most people don't realize how the census works. Most people don't realize how the census data works. And whoever gets elected in 2020 will have complete control over that census data and how it's working and how gerrymandering is going to happen for the next decade. And I don't mean presidentially. I mean in the Senate and in the House. And that's important to understand because that's why we saw such an increase in gerrymandering between 2010 and now and those voter suppression laws going into effect. Yeah, I say this all the time. Everyone knows I'm going to say it again. We need way more parties than just two parties and a couple weak parties. The problem is people nowadays vote for the what they deem to be the lesser of two evils. And when you're voting for the lesser of two evils, you're still getting evil. And there's the yeah. problem. Bingo. You nailed it. And that should be unacceptable to anybody. But it's not. You know, it's... It, like I was saying yesterday, you know, uh, it just concerns me that people are accepting. So many people just accept all this shit that we've been talking about. Right. Yeah, and then you also have to go with, you know, the, the subjectivity of evil. I can agree with you 100% uh, on what's evil, and Steve can agree, but not everybody's going to think this individual's evil or that, or even Trump's evil, even though we can sit here all day and talk about all the evil things he's done. It's a subjective term, and it's the same thing with morals. Morals are completely subjective, and it's going to be individual to individual, and that's one of the issues with humans. Well, no, they're choosing their side as the not evil side, but if you look at the facts and look at the people... We have not. Still doesn't work that way. I mean, I could sit here and argue all day on, on why, you know, I think this person may not be evil and you may think this person is. I'm not picking a person, by the way. I'm just saying what you consider to be evil and what we think should be a common thing, you know, war, murder, racism, killing people. Not everybody agrees. Just look at, at how divided the nation is over something like racism, which should be something pretty simple, right, by 2017. 
did you think we'd still be here? Well, probably the people I'm talking to did because we pay attention to this stuff. But most people, that's what you hear all the time. I didn't think we'd still be here in 2017. Well, why? And he that's really all left. I'm saying. I it's agree just, with you, and that's why I just said head, that. It just buried his head in a, for a little while I, and then popped it back up. Yeah, completely agree with you on that. I, I was. That's why I said with the people I'm discussing this with probably you know aren't surprised, but it's just. Yeah. I mean, but where does that somebody terms. like somebody like me? Where does that leave me? I I won't vote for, like just go to the last election. I won't vote for Trump. I won't vote for Clinton, and the two other candidates sucked. You had a whack job in Jill Stein. Um, it was horrible. And before that, I like you know to what I mean? Separate them. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Two As though they're jobs. different. Yeah, there you he, go. He he was a little crazier, I think. Like like <laughs> like Trump crazy, maybe maybe I not know that what bad. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I I I I can't vote in good conscience, you know, for any of these people. Not even Obama. Not any of them. And I would have loved to be able to say I voted for a first black president, but the first black president didn't in my opinion have my interest or any black people's interest or anybody's you know any of the people's interest at heart in the in in the in the grand scheme of things he might have done some things people say this is better and better especially next to trump oh my god yeah he did some things that were better but he also did some horrible things and and my my morals won't let me vote for horrible things so i'm kind of just left out of the whole process here because there's nobody that i could even vote for in good conscience Right, and I'm oh, yeah. like the complete opposite in, in a sense that my morals won't allow me not to vote for the best for the for the people as a sociologist, the group, what's in the best interest. Whether or not I like the individual or not, my morals will not allow me not to vote because I, I have to figure out – and I guess that would be the lesser of two evils if you want to use those terms, and that's fine. But that that's the way – you know. it's just kind of going back to my, my – what I was trying to say is what we consider our morals are going to be completely different. It's interesting. Yeah. Sorry, I'm a sociologist. This is what happens. No, I fully understand. I just, I just, I can't comprehend how how anyone could vote for somebody who's going to take us into unnecessary war. It's not for our defense or for the defense of some people that are being attacked by their own government somewhere. Maybe. I mean, that does. I I can't. I can't. And and Clinton and Trump, any of them would would have taken us. Or kept these wars going, even if they didn't take us any further. They would have kept these wars going, and these are unjust wars we're already fighting. It's it just I can't do it. It just I I yeah. I'm know. with you, Tim. I haven't voted in a long time, um, and uh, I because because I did. There's nobody to vote for. I mean, there's there's nobody to vote for unless you want to give your endorsement to a psychopath or a sociopath or sometimes both in one person. You know, it's just like you, you they're, they're, and that's another way that our elections are rigged. I mean, we don't get real candidates and not only do we not get real candidates, but it's all set up so that outside parties, you know, other parties that can present viable candidates, they don't have a, they don't stand a chance. You know, it's just the way it's all set up. It's all set in favor of the Democrats and the Republicans. And that is a form of election rigging right there. That's a form of election rigging that we've had for a long time. So, you know, Trump aside, Obama aside, whatever, obviously we've had rigged elections for quite a while now. Because... Yeah, definitely. If the third party is ever going to get elected, I have no idea how it's going to happen. Well, we need third parties that are worth a damn, first of all, where people can get behind them. And and the way you do that is to get a third party that gets behind the people and says, you know what, we're here for you. Not just a platitude, but actually proves that and says, we're here for you. We're going to give you a better life. We're going to take the money from all these people that we've been giving tax cuts to and giving free rides to and all these corporations that are paying us off. And we're going to take the money out of politics and we're going to put put politics and the choice back with the people. And that's what's going to have to happen before. And, and they're, they're, they're nowhere near even thinking about doing that. Right. No, you're you're absolutely right on that one. I can't disagree at all. But so, you know. That's uh, that's 
that's where we're at. We've we've got all this going on. And these these electronic voting machines, I keep trying to tell people, you know, you don't even know how your vote's going to go with an electronic voting machine because if the manufacturer of the voting machine isn't taking bribes to have the voting machine show different results, they are hackable. You know, these machines have been hacked in the past, just like the owners of these companies have paid out a shitload in fines for fraud. Um, and, you know, that's that's like just the start of the laundry list that of things that are wrong with these electronic voting machines. And I, I refuse to believe these electronic voting machines are put in there to make things smoother. You cannot tell me that the people who set this up are unaware of the fact that the manufacturers of the voting machines, these people that they deal with, have paid out all these fines for fraud. You can't tell me that they're unaware that it being a computer system can be hacked. Yeah, I mean, it doesn't have to be hacked. It could just be tampered with. Yep. You know, the people yep. the people there could just just alter it, you know, so votes go the opposite way or go, you know, make sure they all go, the majority go to one person. And yeah. It's really sickening to me, and I, I, I just don't understand why people don't understand this. Like, we, you know, I, I say it every time, we need to get money out of politics. That's one of the main problems here. We have no say because we're not billionaires and millionaires who can go lobby and fund the government to do what we say. Betsy DeVos, we talked about her earlier. I'm not sure if it was in yesterday's episode or this one. She paid her way up into the White House. It cost her like eight or nine million dollars. I'm not sure. Something like that. Sorry, Olive's going crazy. But it's, it's just, there's, it's so easy to fix and they don't want it fixed. If they wanted it fixed, it would be fixed. Yeah. Well, they don't want it fixed because it works for them just fine. You know, it fucks the rest of us, but it works for them. So, um, this one is obviously happening in the United States, and that puts us at 14 for 14. Oh my god, we're we, living in a We did it, nation. guys! Oh, we, I don't think that's supposed to be a positive thing, huh? No, we're living, uh, <laughs> yeah, we've just proved to everyone we're living in a fascist nation. And yep. our choices are now to fight it and stop it. Or let it continue until it gets so strong it just destroys us all. Yep. The quest the the question is no longer are we living in a fascist nation? The question now could be how fascist are we? You know? Like but we are definitely living in a fascist nation. And yes, you're right, that should be unacceptable to everybody. You know, I agree. And and here's the thing, right? Like, I love that that I love that uh, uh, illustration where you have this guy at a lectern talking to everybody, and everybody's listening to him, and he's on a board that's going out off the edge of a cliff, and his end of the board is staying up because everybody who's on the on the cliff is standing on the board. And if everybody just moves off the board, you know, he's not going to be there anymore. And that's the whole thing. Like, there does not have to be a violent revolution. There does not even have to be a nonviolent revolution. Literally, all we have to do is just opt out. We have to look at what's going on, recognize it's fucked up, and opt out. And if we did that, that would be the end of it. You know, and then we set up something new. But everybody wants to wait until it's going to get to a point where it's going to take a violent revolution. Yep. Um, so, yeah, does anyone else have anything to add? I got a barking doggy over here. Nope. So, nope, yeah. nope. Thanks, everyone, for listening. Um, we got to stop this. This fascism is getting ridiculous. And like I said, either we're going to end it or it's going to swallow us all up into it. And there'll be no hope because it'll be too late by then. So um, from my understanding, in a couple of weeks, we're going to do a wrap up show. Um, 
on all on this on the 14 tenants we we went through today and we'll have more people on and we'll discuss it all together in one wrap-up show so thanks for listening to the final episode listen if you haven't heard all the other ones listen i think we make a good case for why we need to to realize where we're at as far as the united states being a fascist nation and think of ways that we could combat this effectively so Arriva Derche, proud Americans. Sorry to poop on your party. Yeah. Thanks again for listening, guys.